Uh, I was at Coex yesterday and I passed by Labiote, the brand that brought you the wine tints and wine lipsticks and shit. And um, I saw a display for this new product in there, which was a wine foundation. So I couldn't be, I couldn't say that I was surprised that it finally came out with it. Or not finally, but I feel like it's new because I don't think I've ever seen it before because I passed by that store a lot and this is the first time I've seen it. And um, I think one of the boys from Produce 101 was like the model or whatever. But this is the Chateau Labiote Wine Foundation Stick and it comes in three shades. It was 22,000 won, so give or take a few cents, $20 or so. Um, and you get 7.5 grams. This is the Pony Effect Makeup Artist Stick. This is a foundation stick and this is, I believe, 12 grams of product and it's, it's like 30-ish dollars. Depending on the kind of coverage that we can get from this foundation, that could be, you know, worth the money or not. Because if the cream foundation here is a really full coverage formula, you can get away with a lot less product and, you know, it will obviously last you longer. Now there are three shades. I got mine in B23 Natural Beige. There's one that's like a B21 and there's another one that's like a 13, which uh, it was uh, much paler and more on the pink side. But when I first swatched it, I immediately thought of a Play 101 stick from Etude House. Um, they have foundation shades and those are super creamy and super emollient, but they kind of move around a lot and they're kind of oily and I, they feel more like Halloween makeup to me, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the packaging is really cute. There, the top, I don't know, is the top? No, I don't think the top's anything other than, because sometimes these have some sort of function, but, oh, let me just fucking ruin it right now. There's the stick. <laughs> Well, I don't think it matters too much because I'm going to be using it anyway. And the bottom, twist the stick up and down. Now, I just got out of the shower earlier and I had to blow dry my hair and I did my skincare. Um, I'm going to go out later, so I'm going to kind of get ready now. Isn't this so cute? Now, the way I like to apply foundation is with a kind of dense brush like this. But my favorite one is this because it's so much quicker. So um, I'm gonna try out with this way, which I feel like is how most cream foundations are applied. And then on the other side, I'm gonna try it with my Espar silicone sponge, which is amazing with cream foundations. And I think originally it was meant for cream foundations. So um, because I'm getting older, she's foundation is not looking too cute in like my fine lines. So what I'm gonna do, what I have to do is use as little as possible and then i'm thinking maybe because i don't want to like take it on today uh maybe later in the evening you know we'll see if we can get away with a little bit great but if um i feel like i can try to build it up i'll do that later in the day when i'm not going to look crazy throughout the day oh, okay <laughs> ah, let me kind of all right so this one kind of feels similar to the pony effect one where it's not as creamy and emollient as the oh it's oh, okay or it's not as emollient as the Etude House one. Wow, okay. To you, to a lot of you, you're probably like, oh my, god, your skin looks still looks like shit. But I feel I don't know. I, I kind of like like the natural. For me, I've gotten some flack before for using like foundation, maybe like for with this much coverage, and they're thinking. Why don't you just use full coverage? You look like you're not trying that hard. But again, on a normal day-to-day -day basis, I'm like not trying to put like, I'm not trying to cake it on. Although it's nice. My skin does fare better when I have as little foundation as, on it as possible because my skin is oily. Like it will look amazing. Like I'll put all these powders, contour, highlight, and like my face will look really anime-like, but then Five minutes later, as soon as like as soon as my oil starts coming, then it already starts breaking down. But this is really nice. It blends out really, really quickly. But I don't feel like I'm rubbing off any of the foundation because a lot of them, when you brush it or you swipe it, it's like it's gone. And I was a little worried that it'd be too light because on my hand and maybe in that little clip that you saw of the swatches, um, they looked like they'd be way too light. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I can only put this on the center of my face. But I think I can. Kind of, if I use it lightly. That is really nice. Okay, bitch. But you can see that evening out just the center of my face already kind of makes this whole side look much better. Even though I don't really have any foundation on my forehead. Well, to me, it's probably looking way worse on camera. 
There we go. Again, my monitor is in S-Log right now, so everything looks great to me, so I don't know what it really looks like, but in person, it looks really natural. And again, I didn't put that much, but I'm very happy with where it is right now. I didn't put any on my dark circles in like around here yet. Um, I don't know what, normally I would just use like a separate concealer because I think like a really creamy foundation like this would like immediately just like start taking up around my eyes. So I would use something a lot more solid, but I guess we can try. It helped it a little bit. It looks a little bit gray, kind of, because I didn't really color correct the blueness of the dark circle. I'm gonna try with one of my favorite methods, the kind of sponge chip applicator method. Yeah, no. So this is definitely just like an all, like you get, like it's okay, like it even out my dark circles a little bit, but from like the way I, cause I can look very tired very easily and I really need something good to cover my dark circles. Um, for me, this would definitely be just like a light foundation on the skin, not like I'm gonna try to cover everything with it, but you can probably do it if, you can probably get away covering like minor issues with it. Um, but yeah, that's just what it looks like. Just like by itself, nothing else. Here it is super up close. I think it looks really natural. Gives like a really soft luminous finish. Not luminous though, like it's dewy. It's just because I had that skincare on so my skin is looking quite naturally dewy anyway. All right, so now let's try it with the Espar sponge. First I'm gonna lightly just put, cause you, because this isn't, isn't absorbing any product, it leaves all the product that's on your skin there and you need to blend it out, so. Okay. <laughs> Just add a little more. With the sponge, I kind of do it in circles just so like I push it into the pores. And then I kind of swipe across. Like a combination of swiping and um, patting. All right, so I'm definitely having to build this side up more, which is pretty interesting because usually this sponge takes care of cream foundation like super easily. All right, so this side did take a little bit more work, but I think we've got pretty much to the same place. Um, I have this kind of acne scarring here. Let's try covering it a little more. Well, she just doesn't want to be covered. Do I prefer one side over the other? In terms of finish, not really. Um, this side was much quicker and I did actually end up using less product on this side. So I'm a little worried because on this side, my eye creases are way worse than this side. Uh, and when I get creasy, it's like way more obvious than here. So um, I'm going to quickly just buff over one more time just to make sure I have as little product on my skin as possible because yeah even if you know even if this is still showing I'd rather have overall the finish be more thin but uh, yeah there you go it looks really nice um I've always had a soft spot for cream foundations not like the ones not not like the cream pack foundations like the BTS and Vaunt one but ones like this like in the stick form I think they're really convenient it's just that you have to find the right formula for your skin type. And um, for me, I like the slightly more solid ones. And on a normal basis, I would be setting this, but we'll try it without setting it um, just to see how it's gonna, like I have a pretty good feeling it's gonna crease around my eyes. Um, like I'm, I'm telling you now, it's probably going to. But we wanna see how it lasts on its own. Um, I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna do my hair and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, I just did my eye makeup, my eyebrows, put some lip tint on and yeah, um, the foundation has pretty much settled into my skin and it's looking a little bit more glossy than when we initially started. So I have a good feeling that this, if you have oily skin, you're probably gonna have, like me, you're probably gonna have to set it. Um, but so far, uh, I think because I blended it really well and I didn't use too much, um, it hasn't settled. Cause usually at this point, even regular liquid foundations or cushions, will start creasing around my eyes, but so far it's looking pretty good. I only use this on my skin today. Um, so if I were using this like a, on a regular day, I would have used like some kind of under eye corrector cause I mean, it's okay from like far away, but if you like really look, then you can clearly see my dark circles like sitting right there under my eyes. But so far I like the way it makes my skin look. I don't think like 
I'm not think I'm not looking at it thinking, oh my god, my pores are completely gone, but uh it's just my skin, but a little bit better. You can see here, this is not full coverage at all. It's more like a uh, medium, light to medium, um, depending on how much you build it up. But when I was kind of building it up, it didn't come off to me like if I kept putting it on, it would become full coverage. It was kind of like, no matter how many times I put it on, it's still gonna rain like maybe medium. Uh, but yeah, you can see it right here. This is what we're working with so far. Um, and it's right now, what time is it? It's 12.06, I have to get, I have to leave right now because I have to go meet my friend. But uh, yeah, I'll see you in another clip. Hi, um, this is what it looks like in natural daylight. This light is not doing me any favors right now because it's making my acne scarring look worse, which is fine, I guess. Um, but if you're like me and um, have acne scarring, like the pitted scarring, uh, don't expect this to give you like super smooth looking skin. Um, if I wanted that, I would definitely have to go with all sorts of different things like uh, slightly thicker foundation and like uh, powder and things like that. But this is what it looks like. Hi, it is... Oh, I need to remember to bring my phone out. It's uh, 5.41 in the evening and I didn't wear it for that long, but I have to film a video right after this. So I need to like wash my face now. But I actually really, really like this. Um, I don't know how it looks on camera right now because I just don't know how it looks on camera right now. It probably looks to you, it, I mean, it's getting kind of shiny, but I like the way it just looks really natural. So this isn't going to be a foundation that you want if you want like that full coverage because it's not, even from the beginning it wasn't that full coverage. But I really like how natural it is on my skin personally. And yeah, my skin is pretty bad. So if your skin is better than mine, it would probably look it would probably be more full coverage to you. But for me with like shitty skin, it's like pretty good coverage for like what it is. But what I enjoy, and let me zoom you in, um, is that you guys know I crease a lot, or I tend to crease a lot. And here it's just only now starting to kind of crease. It, this is like a really bad place for foundations to crease. Like most foundations will crease really bad here, but so far, it only, like, oh, I don't know if you can see this. Only a little bit, and also, like, here. Like, it's barely creasing right there in my, um, fine lines under my eyes. And usually that's where it's, like, it gets, like, really bad, especially for cream foundation. So, I think for this, for what it is, I think it held up really well. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, like, the fact that I really buffed and blended it out with, you know, this and the Esquire sponge. So I'm going to say for now that I really like this foundation. This is probably going to be one of my go-to like natural day foundation. Like if I'm late for something and I just need to slap something on my face, this is probably going to be one of my go-tos um, for that. If, it, if I want some full coverage, I'm not going to reach for this. But um, I'm pretty sure this review is not going to go up until many a day later. So if anything happens, then I'll let you know. But hey, I just finished washing my face. Um, and doing my skincare. But uh, I've been wearing the foundation for se uh, several a day and, and I really, really like it. Uh, it's funny because I'm just only now looking at the claims on the website and um, it pretty much confirms what I, how I felt about the foundation in the first place. Basically it has a smooth melting texture that wraps around your skin. It's got, um, it gives you like this hydro radiant skin texture that kind of naturally bounces light off your skin. And it's a closely adhering foundation so that it expresses crease free skin, which is pretty much what I've been experiencing. So it also says here that it's great for touching up. And this is something that I definitely noticed throughout wearing it. Um, now I, I've said already that I've always seen so normally I would powder foundation um, even if it's down the, just the center but what I really like about this is that because it doesn't really break down a lot even from my natural oils um, I find that I don't really have to powder it and that if like you guys know my chin like does not hold foundation I can take the stick with me because it's like small already and I can just touch up here but because I didn't put any powder on top or anything, um, it just melts in back into like the rest of the foundation. So it looks like perfectly retouched. And so yes, I can wear it um, with powder. It looks great and everything. But on those days that I really want just completely natural makeup, this is like my go-to right now. Um, and also I pretty much have been exclusively using it with that big Clio 
like toothbrush looking brush uh, just because it's super fast and easy. It says that there's a uh, wine in here to help brighten the skin, smooth out the skin over time as you're using it apparently. There's grapeseed oil, all pretty like shea butter, meadow foam seed oil, all basically for moisturizing. Um, I guess the only thing I have to say though is that on top of sunscreen, like nearly all foundations do for me, it kind of breaks down quicker on top of um, sunscreen. So that's why I really just wear it. Like I'll wear, I don't mind wearing it on top of sunscreen, but if I want it to look like even better, like look really good like all day, then I'll just wear it like right immediately after my normal skincare. So overall, I think this would be great for both dry and oily skin. For dry skin, definitely exfoliate. And maybe you might want to try using your fingers to blend the foundation. You can use a brush, but that might risk like, uh, lifting up any dead skin cells, but it shouldn't be too bad because it is a really creamy, moisturizing foundation, so over over the, over the course of the day, it will like smooth out. And then for oily skin, if you have really oily skin, then definitely powder. But for me, I do like some kind of a dew throughout the day, so I don't really mind not powdering it. So yeah, anyway, there's my review of the wine foundation stick from La Biote, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.